Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. It's time for Second Bull Run as I continue in my reboot of the uh, legendary campaign of Ultimate General Civil War on the Confederate side. Going into this battle, uh, the enemy army total has 86 to 91,000 men. That's about uh, 26,000 fewer than he had this time, uh, last time at this point in the campaign. He was at 112 to 117. So, uh, much better situation for me. And I'm also going to employ uh, a tactic that I have used other times, uh, which is, I've actually got a little bit more I need to do here, uh, which is to not reinforce my troops. So you can see all the numbers still remain where they were at the end of the last uh, couple of battles. Um, I'm doing that for the same reason I did it before. I'm preventing enemy scaling. I'm basically going to give myself an opportunity to... Uh, greatly even the odds going into this battle compared to last time. Uh, so I think this could turn into an opportunity to inflict massive casualties on him and uh, essentially wipe out his army at second bull run and hopefully set myself up for a much better situation at Antietam. Uh, so we'll see what happens. All right, so helpful little tidbit for you here on this first pay, uh, phase of the battle. I don't even really like to do this part. I find it kind of unnecessary and... I find it's better just to not even deal with it. So if you take all your troops out and just fast forward within a few minutes, it just automatically takes you to the next phase of the battle. So that's what I'm going to do here. And then I can go back into the camp and start loading up my men. He should only have about 48,000 men this time around. Yeah, so he's at 47,934. I believe last time he was over 60,000 and I had about 38,000. So the odds are actually going to be really, really good for me this time because I won that battle uh, being outnumbered by about 22,000 men. I think if I'm outnumbered at all this time, it's only going to be a couple of thousand. All right, so I didn't use all of my troops uh, just because uh, money's an issue and uh, I basically used all my weapons. So, um, But I'm only outnumbered by about 4,500 men, which last time it was 22,000. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this. I feel like this is going to be a really good day for me and a chance to really hurt, hurt him big time. So we'll see what happens. And, of course, I'm going to use my usual strategy, which is to completely uh, pull everybody back to this tree line here and just keep it tight and compact and make it much, much easier to defend. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start getting my, my troops into position, get everything ready to go. I've got some over there. That's kind of crazy. I hope I can get them back over here before the enemy arrives. And then we'll see what happens. It'll probably be a while before there's really any fighting to speak of. Okay, so you can see I've got my whole first corps ready to go. 30,000 men, 60 guns. And I'm in a nice tight formation that makes it really easy to reinforce and bring up support where needed. I've got all these 10 pounders sitting back there. I honestly don't think there's anything more that I could do to be prepared for this enemy when he does finally arrive. Uh, when he gets in position, he usually like kind of sits out here for a while, and that's why having all these 10 pounders will be nice and keeping them well supplied, because it gives me an opportunity to get some long range fire, hopefully on his guns if they get close enough. And so even before anything happens, I can be kind of weakening him further. So we'll see uh, when the attack finally arrives. All right, so we're into phase two of the battle now. We're just now getting sight of the enemy for the first time, and he's loading up on my flanks, which is not completely unexpected, except I don't remember normally seeing him come this far down over here. And maybe that's because normally I, I park here in the woods and prevent that. But we're kind of sitting out in the open here, and that's really totally fine with me. I'm going to bring my Napoleons up a little further. And so I'm allowing my 10 pounders to kind of open up on him as well as the smooth boards that are down here in front. And uh, the first unit of 10 pound parrots already has 58 kills. The other has 71 and this one I just got into position and they're starting to fire as well. So as long as I keep them well supplied uh, they should be able to do some nice damage here. And he's pulling back now over there. All right, so we'll drop out, and when he finally decides to attack, we'll see what's going on. All right, looks like Meade's going to give it a go here, all by his lonesome self. So we'll go ahead and take take that challenge on. I'm trying to do some counter-battery fire, take out his battery that's up there if I can. 
All right, and Jackson's going to follow Meade up. I'm going to bring Penrose over just to have a little bit of support just in case. Though I don't expect I'm going to need it. At least not this early. Uh, right now, numbers look like this. He's got about, eh, about 8,000, 8,200 more men than I do on the field. But with my strong defensive position, that should be pretty easy to handle. Okay, so it looks like his first attack up the hill at my uh, left flank is coming. And we are prepared for that. Time to inflict some massive casualties on him. I've got my smoothbores over there. I've got all my 10-pounders going nice and strong. I'm going to keep them well supplied. Make sure that my troops stay well supplied. And in about an hour, I should be getting my reinforcements over on the right flank. And I've barely even engaged him so far. So this should turn out nicely. Uh, he's lost about 1,200 men so far. I've lost about 600, 500, 600. But once he finally attacks me, that's where the, the casualties will start to mount up for him. So things are heating up over uh, in what will become my center. I'll call this the center just because uh, this will be my left and then I'll have the right flank down here once the second corps arrives. Uh, that's kind of where the action is. It's actually where most of my casualties have been taken so far because just very little is happening up on this side. I'm going to come over here and make sure everybody's resupplied. But he's largely holding back, trying to hit me a little bit here where I don't have as much artillery. Should be getting my reinforcements in about the next 45 minutes or so. Wow, Major General James Longstreet has been killed at the Second Battle of Bull Run. Didn't see that one coming. And historically, Longstreet had a big part in why this battle turned into a rout when he... Uh, arrived on the battlefield but man that kind of stinks to, to lose him but uh, I'm starting to get around on his flank massive casualties happening here uh, I did have one unit that fell back but honestly that's not a huge deal at all looking at the numbers right now as I'm waiting my reinforcements to arrive I've lost about 2600 men he's lost 6000 so at this point, once my reinforcements arrive, I should actually have more men on the field than he does. And I can hopefully turn this into a route for, on day two. My reinforcements have arrived and something completely unexpected just happened. He's got troops down here. Didn't expect to see that at all. So I'm going to be engaging him way sooner than I expected. And in a place I certainly didn't expect. I mean, that's totally fine. I can handle it. Just wasn't, didn't see that coming at all. So I'm going to send the, uh, the supplies up to kind of help resupply my beleaguered forces in the center where almost all of the action is taking place and most of my casualties have taken place. Um, looking at the numbers now, I do just barely have fewer troops on the field than him, but I haven't gotten my full force yet. I haven't gotten my cavalry in, into the field yet, uh, so that's who I'm, I'm still missing out on. But again, casualties for him approaching 10,000. For me, uh, about 4,500 at the moment. So we're on to day two now, and uh, the reinforcements have arrived for me. I have my entire force now, but no sign of the enemy. Uh, of course, he gets more reinforcements as well, so he's outnumbering me right now by about 4,200 men on the field, and that's probably going to increase before it's all said and done. Uh, I may just kind of hold tight. We'll see how things progress, but I am bringing my Cavalry Corps with General Withers, who is my Cavalry Corps commander at the moment. Uh, just kind of around to see and explore and kind of see what I might be able to accomplish in his rear. So I'm going to try to be cautious with this, but look for some opportunities while simultaneously, hopefully, allowing him to come at me in my already existing position and I can inflict some more casualties on him and maybe turn things into a route. We'll see and just kind of take it how it goes. So two things are happening now. One is I did discover some mounted infantry of his 
way back here in the rear, but he's he's running away as I try to pursue him, so nothing may come of that. But also, I, I have finally made contact with the enemy, and I've got him kind of bent into this little corner here where I can really do some damage, I think, and inflict some casualties. I tried to get at his artillery, and maybe what I need to do is bring my cavalry back so that I can make use of them a little closer to the battlefield. Though at this point that's going to be quite a little ride around the enemy. So, But I think that's what I'm going to do. Because situations like right here where he's got cav uh, got artillery that I could really be going after. So he's actually turning back some of my army here. Alright, we only got about an hour left here. Um, my cavalry's finally getting into position. And Hiram Berdan's going to be the first victim of said cavalry. I've actually got two units of melee cavalry along with two units of mounted infantry. And this battery is going to be toast too. I hope. got to be careful he doesn't drag me too far. Once weed's gone completely, we'll pull back. Oh boy, there's all his supplies. All right, back out, back out. We wiped out Berdan and the and the infantry or the uh, artillery. Uh, it's pretty much a route now for the Union at this point. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get at those supplies without endangering my troops. But if I can do that, I'll, I'll find a way to do it. I don't know what's going to happen right here, but if I can play my cards right, and I don't know what's even in here, this, my friends, is what we call the grand prize of supplies. There are six supply units right here. And while there may be infantry back here, I don't see them right now. Just this one unit that I'm going to quickly overrun. And then everybody else... I'm going to make a mad dash for these supplies if I can. Okay, there's infantry. Ah, darn it. Well, that's what I was afraid of. And that's kind of the game that he plays. He, he kind of entices you with infantry, or with uh, supplies, and then pulls you right into his infantry. So I'm not going to bite. It's not worth it. We'll just destroy this unit here. Gobble him up take out this battery here and then just be content to call it a day I think because that's going to take us right down near the end of the, of the time on this battle alright I'm pulling out before I get sucked in too far alright we did wipe out the unit but my three star took some casualties in the process all right, I think this is going to be a good day. We'll see how it all ends up. All right, so not what I had hoped when I started the battle, but uh, just the circumstances dictated that it end up this way. Uh, I basically brought into the battle almost the identical number of men. Um, he brought in far fewer, about 15,000 fewer, uh, but his casualties are right about the same. He actually lost maybe 3,000 more than this my first time. But I also lost um, lost quite a bit more. Um, it's misleading because <clears throat> this 8,000, uh, the last time I played it, I had replenished a lot of my troops. And so it only showed 6,000 casualties, but I probably lost more in the neighborhood of twelve or 13,000 last time. So I cut that number down by quite a bit. Uh, so both sides lost a little bit fewer. But the main point here for me is that moving forward, uh, I should be in a much better situation so I'm going to look real quick at where things stand this time compared to last time. All right, so last time at this point, he had 99 to 104,000. So that number has creeped, uh, crept up a little bit from where it was before, um, but still a, a difference of about 13,000 men. Uh, Antietam, I think, is still going to be a tough one for me, but I should be able to reduce his numbers some by winning at Harper's Ferry and at Chantilly. 
But just taking a look right now at what Antietam looks like uh, if it were fought right now. And he's at 84,000, which is less than before, but still absolute insanity. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do there. Uh, but I still believe I'll be in a better position once that battle comes about than I was before. So uh, we'll kind of get refit, ready to go. And then I'll go ahead and dive right into what's next. Chantilly. So we'll get into that one here in a minute. All right, we're on to the Battle of Chantilly. And the odds are going to be basically even here. Uh, we're both going to have about the same number of troops on the field once everybody's on the field. Uh, so I'm rushing to get the best ground possible, as I always do on this one. I want to hold right at the edge of these woods and leave him out in the open to have to fight at me from the fields. I want to go ahead and cover my flanks a little bit with some skirmishers. And then I'll pretty well just kind of sit back and let him come at me. And hopefully, if I gain enough of an advantage that way, I can press this and try to inflict as many casualties as possible. I want to do that as much as I can in these next two battles going into Antietam. So we'll fast forward, we'll get into position, and we'll see what happens when the enemy arrives. So this is kind of how things have settled in at the moment, because he rushed a brigade up here into the south. So rather than being able to build my battle line all the way along right here, I had to kind of adjust a little bit and shift some units over to deal with the threat from Nagel. Once I drive off these skirmishers and I can get into Nagel's flank, I can drive him off and then I can kind of close this out. And in the meantime, I'm going to kind of get a, a brigade up here just to protect the guns a little bit. I'm going to send posts down to reinforce. And I think I should be able to settle in here pretty well. Uh, just deal with this little threat out here on my right flank for the time being. So I think the way this battle is going to be determined is going to be on the flanks. So I tried to get Orphan Brigade up here, their skirmishers up here on Ferrero's flank, so I can turn him. Um, i got to do the same thing over here. These pesky skirmishers are making things kind of difficult for me. I need to drive them off so I can get into Nagel's flank. And then once I do that, then things start to break in my favor. Right now, pretty even. Uh, Union's lost 2,000 men. I've lost about 800, which means at the moment he's he's actually got about 3,400 fewer men than I do. So we want to try and increase that. I want to get that up to eight or 10,000 if I can before it's over. And this is really the only spot where I don't have um, a two to one situation at least. And so I'm a little worried about Enyart, who's taking some major casualties. I really need to get Ferrero's flank turned, and so far it's not happening. And the Orphan Brigade is still holding their own. I mean, 300 kills to 119 deaths. Now he's starting to rush some more troops up that way. Let's get these uh, smoothbores up a little closer. And, I, and I'm kind of desperate to get this situation down here resolved because I don't like how this is going to go long term right here. Okay, there we go. We finally routed Nagel. So this is going to resolve this situation here. We can push these skirmishers out, get everybody driven back this way. And the same thing's happening with Ferrero, except I wish he would break this way. Instead of breaking this way, he's, he's breaking backward. And that actually kind of complicates things a little bit. And I'm going to have to push Nagel out a little further yet. But at least now he's out into the open. Now Ferrero has kind of disappeared at the moment. That's fine. That allows me to do this. Alright, so we've got an hour and 40 to go. Casualties now, 4,000 for him, uh, about 1,400 for me. Here comes Ferrero again, but we're ready for him. And we just got to push Nagel. So now I get the situation the way I wanted it to begin with, which is now I've got uh, a straight line here. I've got to get down and resupply the folks that have been heavily engaged. I'm going to 
I'm going to drop Enyard out. His uh, commanding officer was killed. Uh, he's also lost about a third of his force, though he's inflicted almost 1,200 casualties. But we're going to go ahead and get him out of there and put Hampton's Legion in in his place as soon as I get Nicholas into position. There we go. We did drive Ferrero back again and again. He's coming at me along with some other skirmishers over here. And now we've got an ammo issue up there, so I should have been supplying earlier. But I'll run down, I'll resupply down on this end real quick, and then I'll start doing the same up on the other end. We'll see what happens. All right, I'm pressing this thing forward, and I'm hoping that it allows this battle to continue. It's 5.38 in the afternoon. I would think this battle should be able to continue, at least for a little while. I want to press him all the way push them all the way against the wall, so to speak, and see if I can't destroy some of this army. So Nicholas got driven back, but I, I rushed him into those two batteries, so I wasn't taking canister fire. So I tried to do some damage to them as much as I could. I'm just going to keep pressing this, and we'll see how long it allows me to let it continue. He's down to just 15,000 men. Um, so where I started with a 3,000 man advantage is now up to about 8,000 and still climbing. Alright, this is looking good. Uh, I'm in the process of finishing off his batteries. And now I can start turning up. i got to be careful here because I got a little bit ahead of myself. And now Eccles is going to get flanked. Because I drove some of these units up right into other units. So a little bit of an issue there, but nothing I can't overcome here in the near future. So I'm going to finish him off, and we'll see what the numbers look like. Right now, he's down to just 11, 12,000 men. I want to wipe them off the map if I can. All right, so I managed to grab his supplies, and I was in the process of driving him up into the corner when the time hit 7.30 and the battle ended on me. So let's see how things ended up. Pretty good, I think. Uh, we're looking at 16,000 casualties inflicted, actually over 17,000 when you count uh, the number of troops that I took out among his artillery. Let's see how that compares to last time. The main thing is going to be looking at how the overall army compares. Last time he only lost 8,000, I lost 3,300. So both sides basically doubled. I grabbed a bunch more Harper's Ferries, which is nice. Uh, I grabbed a little bit of supplies. There wasn't much left in those supplies. But now we're gonna, gonna take a quick look at where things stand. So he was at 101 to 106 last time around at this point. Now he's at 79 to 84, so I drove that number back up to 22,000. And I'm hoping that Weapons Factory can be another one of those battles where I just annihilate him and hopefully drive that number down even further and give myself a fighting chance at the Battle of Antietam, which is going to be an absolute, absolute bloodbath as it was historically. But you can see his number went down here. Um, of course, my number went down, so that might be just scaling, but I guess we'll see. All right, we'll come back with Weapons Factory. All right, so Weapons Factory, I'm going to have about a 5,000-man advantage, and uh, he's going to have more guns, but we're going to neutralize those guns. Uh, I've got, I'm bringing all 10-pounders to this fight, and I'm going to park them up here, nice long range, and we're going to just hit him the best I can. I am going to leave... Uh, one brigade over here along with some skirmishers to protect those guns against any idea he may have about coming across. The only way he's going to come across is by coming down here. So actually, I think I'll leave the Snakefoot Brigade right there. And I'll bring everybody else around to begin the attack. And once I get into position, we will see how it goes. So this is what it looks like in my 10-pounders have been really disrupting him because he keeps moving his artillery every time he sets him up and I start firing on him he moves him again and uh, so he hasn't really been able to make use of them so far so that uh, really are doing their job there 
And I'm going to start to swing around and do what I normally do, and hopefully we can inflict some major, major damage on his army going into Antietam here. Not entirely sure what has happened here, but some kind of glitch where the 1st uh, Maryland Potomac Home Brigade is stuck. And I'm guessing until I route him, he's going to stay stuck. So I'm just going to stand here and shoot at him. But otherwise, he's actually holding his line fairly well at the moment. I can't quite get him to break. But once I do, this should just fold over like a house of cards. I, I gave fire orders to this unit here, and they started moving. So... Uh, I guess that was a mistake. I gotta get him back into position. But he's starting to rush help over here now. That unit's still glitched up there. They're not breaking or anything, they're just sitting there. So I'm just gonna fire away. Right now, uh, 900 casualties for him, almost 1,000 now. Um, about 1,200 for me, so I'm actually losing more at the moment. Which is a little disappointing, but we're gonna we're gonna fix that. All right, the route is on. I completely destroyed the Potomac Home Brigade up there. He's starting to rush over toward me here, so I'm gonna have to counter that. Hopefully, O'Hare can hang on for dear life while I send help. he's getting hit from both sides now. I sent these skirmishers over here to try and grab the supplies and then I ran into more of his skirmishers and that kind of messed things up a little bit. So I've got a little bit of an issue here with O'Hare facing down three brigades of infantry on one side and dealing with artillery on the other. There we go. Alright, I'll go back and deal with the artillery. I'll bring these guys down. And we're gonna push him down toward the river and see if we can't destroy this army. Hopefully it lets it keep going, but right now we're looking good. He's down to just 11,000 men. All right, disappointingly, once again, it allowed it to continue for just a couple of minutes, but then it ended the battle before I was in a position to really do some damage. Uh, I was really, I was on the verge of destroying that army, and it, it, even though it's only 8.30 in the morning, it ended the battle, so really disappointed by that. That was a great opportunity for me. But now's our chance to see what Antietam's going to look like. So he's going to have 91 to 96,000. I would bet that just about every bit of those are actually going to be uh, in his army. Now, I don't have anything to compare it to because I didn't fight the Battle of Antietam last time. But I know even before scaling what his army is going to look like. And it's at 80,000. Uh, so all I've got right now is 34,000. Um, I've got another 16. At best, I can field an army of 50,000 men to go up against his 80,000. So again, this may be a situation where it's just not worth it to try and win the battle. Uh, maybe I can fight for a draw. Uh, but again, the casualties are just going to be so severe. I lose 44 points for a defeat, so I'd like to avoid that if possible. But that'll be in the next uh, video, which will probably be in a couple days. I've got a pretty full couple of days ahead of me. So I would guess probably maybe this weekend, maybe Friday or Saturday before we'll get to Antietam and decide what we're going to do there. But as always, I welcome your input, your comments, your questions, your observations, your criticisms. Use the comment section below. Check out some of my other videos. Hit that thumbs up if you would. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you again next time. Thanks, guys.